So, I hope I gave you a good overall view of Raiders gameplay and uh, uh, as well as you know, knowledge on the new things that we're showing, which is the Grand Wall of Silence area, the new Camara boss, uh, the new uh, uh, enemies that drop their weapons, all that type of stuff is throughout the whole game. Um, and it's sort of the, the, the cornerstone of Raiders gameplay is the big boss fights, killing the guys, grabbing their gear, grabbing their loot to craft, craft the better gear, craft the better weapons, and uh, progressively, uh, um, progressively make your character bigger and stronger. Um, so we'll be announcing an open beta date pretty soon. It shouldn't be too much longer now. And uh, you'll be able to see all this content for yourself. Questions? Yeah, for mounts. You always have one where you attack once and then do your fighting stance. Are you yeah. looking into fighting on your mount? Um, we discussed that. Um, it's uh, it'll be that will probably happen in post open beta, um, you know, new content. But when the open beta first launches, it'll just be that one strike and then dismount. There's not going to be any uh, mount against mount combat. But that's something we're planning for the future. Okay. Um, you said once you get to level 10, you're, all your skills open up, but you've already learned skills to get to level 10? Yes, so every time you level, you get one skill point. Right. When you choose your, uh, you go through character creation, you choose your base job at the very beginning. For your, the first 10 levels, you're forced to put those skill points into that base job. So if you chose a defender, your first 10 skill points will go into the uh, defender skill tree. Then once you hit level 11, everything opens up. And every skill point you get from then on, you can put in any of the trees. So it still doesn't matter what you start as? Uh, it like does. It, okay. it, it does matter what you start as because that's all, you're always going to have that base job. You're always going to have the, uh, you know, the first 10 skill points would have gone into that. So that will always be kind of your primary. Uh, and then the, as you're going through the, um, you know, cycling through the weapons that we talked about, that will be your secondary weapon and your secondary skills. So it, it, does choo it, it does matter what you choose at the beginning, but then you have the ability to, uh, to kind of branch it out later. Since you're focusing on this, essentially the end of classless system, um, where you can scatter your points about, by end game, do you have the opportunity of having every single skill, or are we still limited? Uh, you will, you'll, you'll only be limited by the level cap. Okay. Um, so the level cap's 30, you will only have gotten 30 skill points, which isn't nearly enough to fill out the, the you know, the entire skill system. You probably, you if, if you did a pure build of one and didn't branch out at all, you'd get pretty close by the end of the game uh, of, of specking them all out. And then when we increase the level cap and add more content, of course we'll add more, and then by the end you'll probably have an entire you know tree built. But some people, most people will do some sort of hybrid um, where they'll put like half in one and half in the other. Now the thing about that is you run the risk of spreading yourself too thin. So that's why I would only recommend doing a hybrid of just no more than two classes. So if you uh, uh, if you want to put Defender, Berserker, and Cleric skill points in, that means you're never going to unlock these masteries, which uh, unlock when you put a certain amount of skill points into that tree. Um, so you don't want to spread yourself too thin, and you still want to have the skills leveled up enough to be able to compete. Um, but at the same time, having the balance uh, between um, you know having your pure your uh, your base job set up and uh, uh, and your sort of secondary skills as well, so it's it's a choice you'll have to make. And um, I I mean I always go for the hybrid ones. I like the hybrid defender and uh, defender and sorcerer because they can do you can tank a lot of damage. You can do range damage as well. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, with the focus on the large bosses. Uh, or the large creatures and everything. Yep. Um, obviously, you're using an active combat system. Yep. Are you utilizing anything that'll let you possibly climb on top of the larger creatures and get to better areas to hit them for, for critical damage of any sort? Or um, not really. Not really. There are uh, there there are uh, bosses that have weak points. Uh, for example, there's this goblin golem, and he has this. This giant glowing rock in his chest, mm -hmm. and of course, if you hit that, it'll do more damage. And once you break it, he'll be really, really weak by that point. Um, but as far as actually climbing on them and interacting with them, there's nothing really like that right now. Okay, but if they have a, a weak point like that, how would you give a melee class the opportunity to hit that? Well, he, uh, the one with that weak point, he's he's maybe half, uh, maybe three quarters of the size of this guy. Okay, he's like a bipedal type of dude. So. Uh, he walks kind of hunched over, and then when he stands up straight to attack, that's when you start banging on it. Um, so you, uh, 
it, it's actually probably easier for the melee guys to hit it than the ranged guys. Okay, so any of the creatures that they encounter, if they do have a weak point, it will be accessible. Accessible to everyone, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't know. So when you're fighting something this large, um, is it locked to your party? Because you said like the NPCs join. What about other players? It'll be uh, it'll be locked to the first hit. Anybody can come and deal damage to it. But if you want to uh, to share the loot, it'll be uh, you'll have to be part of that party. Now, one thing that we're that we're really working on, really looking at, is um, being able to uh, either sort of like auto party uh, with someone. Like if you have the quest and these people that are fighting. They're, uh, uh, they're fighting this thing, have a, a similar quest as you. Um, if you join in, either auto party or like an instant party type of thing. So you don't have to, you know, kind of wait or keep grinding it over and over again. And we, uh, we don't want people, um, you know, we don't want like the high, the high level guild sort of spawn camping these guys. Right. So you can actually see his weak point was that big horn and it's been broken off. We did enough damage to actually break it off. So yeah, so things like that, being able to uh, to join with a party to to get the gear, uh, to get the loot, or to finish whatever quest uh, along with it, so you don't have to sit there and camp it, you don't have to grind it. Um, you know, we don't want people to feel grindy or uh, or tedious in the game. So uh, whatever we can do to kind of to kind of keep their gameplay and keep their character going is is what we want to do. As somebody who's played a lot of the uh, large creature attack um, <laughs> or hunting games as it were yeah. um, do you have do these creatures are they simply just uh, blobs of HP or can you actually like sever particular parts to weaken them or um, like if I aim for a leg will that disable their running ability or anything like that it's it's boss to boss they're not just they're not just HP bags that you that you keep hitting they are actually interactive right so one of these uh, uh, one of the first bosses actually the first boss you fight in the game is this big kind of a, a marble column monster guy. And, and as you're dealing damage, like if you deal damage to his leg, you can knock, it, uh, he has like some little shields on his leg, and you can knock it off. And if you go and you pick it up, it actually fully regens your health. So it's cool because you're, you're very new to the game at that point, and that guy deals a lot of damage. One hit will take away like half of your health. But if you can stay alive long enough to knock a piece of that off, and you can consume it, it's like a full full health region, so you can keep it going. So that's what you would do, is like you would aim for one leg, knock that off, get that to you know regenerate, uh, regenerate your health, and then go for the other leg and do it again. And by that time, he'll be so worn down that you can just kind of deal normal damage to him. Um, uh, there are monsters that, uh, uh, like this guy, you know, he knocked his big, his big horn off there. Uh, there's this other big dragon monster that has like this. Uh, that also has this big horn. You can knock it off and pick it up and stab him with it, and that's actually like the final way to kill him. So a lot of interactivity in the bosses. They're not. Uh, uh, they're all very different. The way they attack is very different. Like the big dragon guy, he will actually fly in and swoop and pick you up and slam you into the ground. Um, they're not just like arbitrarily swiping and doing damage. Uh, they're they're sort of very smartly attacking and they're attacking in their own unique ways. Okay, so have you put a uh, particularly strong focus on the hitboxing on this to make sure that the act of combat is um, very physical? Like, yeah. he just swipes and you get HP down, or he, or he swipes and those claws have to hit your physical avatar. The claws have to hit your physical avatar. Okay. And, and conversely, you have to physically hit them. Um, so if you're standing under him uh, and you swing and you don't hit anything, you're not going to do any damage. Um, it's... Uh, uh, so yes, it's the, the focus is on the action combat okay. and not just arbitrarily swinging and doing damage. You mentioned when you change weapons, you get a new skill set. Is there weapons you pick up that you may not be able to use? Um, Mostly from the fights themselves or something like. Like the one that we saw over there. Yeah. Um, you, any any weapon and enemy drops like that, you can use no problem. No matter what your job is. Okay. Um, so there are these skeletons, these skeleton archers, and you can kill them and pick up their bow and arrow and use it. So there's no archer class in the game, so that's kind of your only chance to be able to use a bow and arrow. Um, this uh, this cannon that we saw, mm -hmm. the, your first interaction with it in the game is with these pirates that use it, and uh, they don't drop it, but it's sitting there, and you can go pick it up and grab it. Uh, there, and any creature that drops its weapon, no matter what your job is, you'll always have the ability to use it. So you're not going to miss out on anything. 
So that's, I mean, th things like the things like the changing weapons and the changing skills and everything like that. That's uh, that's like the cornerstone of the game and how how we're trying to keep it fresh by always changing it and always changing it up. So your skills are always changing, your weapons are always changing. You're always, um, you know, you're you're transforming into these other creatures, uh, and this all starts happening uh, very early in the game. Is there going to be like environmental changes? Um, like what would be? Like maybe the chimera came and starts like knocking down buildings, or maybe there's just you know different uh, terrain changes over time or things like that. Um, so there there are there are breakable pieces, but it's not it's not like a destructible environment. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it would sort of be uh, like built into that particular boss fight. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, not not so much the, the breakable or changeable environments. Um, that's kind of uh, all set up with the way it already is. Okay. I think we're out of time. I hope I answer all your guys' questions. And I, I, I go good. Cool.